Yeah, hope that works. All right, cool. Vanth is here. So uh, I'm hearing myself. My headphones, great. So this, uh, we're going to talk today about how to preserve types and not swallow them up. And the way that you do that uh, can be different in a number of situations, but this is what I came up with recently. Um, we're doing a little bit of refactoring on, on the Orion project. So uh, Ryan Walter, I think he's aware that I was going to display or, or present this kind of refactoring session today. So this is an example of a, a function right now. It has test passing and everything. It works totally fine in the JavaScript world. Nothing, you're right there. Nothing is, uh, nothing is wrong with it. It works totally fine, right? Um, but from a TypeScript standpoint, it doesn't work fine. Why? What do I mean by that? Well, in this case, you have, uh, let's see, you have a function. It's got its own signature here. Um, and then it's being exported by default. I'm just going to do a little bit of refracting here and just say export default function bind action creators. And uh, no export default at the end needed. OK, so save that. So, OK, we've got a function here called bind action creators. It takes two arguments, actions, and dispatch. I think we're pretty familiar with what a dispatch is if anyone's worked with React. So I'm going to move those closer to the implementation just to get a clear picture. OK. All right, so these are the types that we're expecting to come in. And these are the types that uh, we're returning out is this context API. Now, what is context API? I'm going to peek that. That is literally just an object with some keys as strings and anything as the as the value. Um, that's actually not a very useful type. You could you could also write that like this record string any. Um, but I will say stay away from any <coughs> at all costs. You you just don't want to use any anywhere if you can help it uh, because it's just going to give you an any type. It's not going to tell you anything about the actual type that you care about. So this is one way that you can swallow up types is by taking whatever types are coming in and just spitting back in any type. That's not going to help anyone. It won't break their code. It'll still compile. But if they're trying to use any kind of like uh, developer experience tooling within Visual Studio Code, for example, to you know glean insights into how that function is called, what it's returning, that kind of stuff, you're just it's it's not going to give it to you. You're going to pass in something that has types, but what you get back is just any. And so you've lost to those types. You've lost that type information. So how do we preserve that? Well, this function is doing a snazzy reduce function. Um, it's, it's expecting this, this string or function array. Um, I looked up bind action creators from other libraries that are like already like public, right? And their signature is a little bit different. What they expect is just like an object coming in with, with keys. Um, Oh, sorry. I need to. I'm going to pull up the actual current code base to see what the what the new one looks like, just as a point of reference. So we go bind action creators. This guy, right? So this. Let's talk about this type. Oh, right. I did generics. Okay, I can go into that. So if we if we expose generics here and we say, hey, I've got two types coming in. One of them is actions. And the other one is dispatch. <clears throat> what we're going to do is say actions equals, we could just say actions equals, or I should say extends this same type right here. I could just say that. Okay. And then for dispatch, I can say the same thing. It extends React Dispatch any. And I'll explain this in a little bit. And then we just reference those types that we just defined in the generics right here. And that's how we link them together to the inputs coming in. So 
The cool thing about this is that TypeScript is smart enough to know that because you've mapped these to actual arguments, that um, you don't actually, when you call the function, you don't actually have to say, you know, you don't have to define those, those generic types before you call it. It's smart enough to know that your first argument is going to be A and your second argument is going to be D, and it will just infer those types from what you pass in. So this is really not much different than what we had before, but it is allowing us to define this, uh, this type coming in that has to conform to this particular type. So what do we do with it, right? Well, uh, what was this one? No, not that one. Let me see. I'm going to cheat and use my own code as an example because I don't want this to take like all day. So this is what I ended up changing this to. So this was an array of like tuples, right? Like the keys or rather the left side of the tuple was uh, like just the name of the function and then the right side was the actual function. And then you're going to like merge them all together into one, into one object and spit it back, right? So we're going to do the same thing, but we're just going to require um, what's coming in is going to be a record, which is, is just a, a plain object. The keys are going to be strings. And instead of any on the right, we're going to say on the right, we're going to have a function. Unfortunately, in TypeScript, you don't just want to write like function or object or any of those things that don't really explain I, I can't actually answer that very well. I, I wish that they did allow you to write function there, but it's kind of frowned upon. So here's how you would actually say a function. You would say, okay, I've got some sort of rest args that's any type of array, and it returns anything. That is another way of writing a function. Unfortunately, it's not that pretty, but it's essentially just saying function, any function. Um, you could even write a type called any function that does exactly that and say, you know, any function equals some sort of args with an any array that returns any. And then there you have any function, and you can actually just say right here, any function, and you're good to go. But I'm not going to do that here because I don't want to. I don't have a better reason. So the other one is React Dispatch Any. We're good there. Um, let's see here. Dispatch, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got these types being a little bit more explicit to what we expect coming in. It's not going to be just... Uh, kind of a blind map of functions, but it's going to be like an object with functions as values. Okay. So what do we do now? Um, the reduce function is a good idea, but we can't really reduce off of the, the object coming in, the actions here, because they're, it's, it's an object. So I have to say like return uh, object.keys, actions dot reduce and then this will be like prev next or prev cur and then some sort of object is the starting point if anyone's not used reduce before this will be a little confusing but um, essentially the way that this works is you're saying hey I've got I'm just gonna comment this out for now you're saying hey I've got um, I want to return an object I know that much so I've got this object here that's my that's my seed. That's my starting point, and uh, I'm going to go through all of these keys in this action coming in. These actions coming in, and for each one of those keys, uh, I'm just going to have this current guy is going to represent that key. So I could just say key, uh, and then the prev here is just going to be this kind of snowball object that we're stacking upon every single time we iterate through this thing. So I could just say. Um, the name of the, what did I name it over here? I named it um, API, right? So in this case, we named it API. Uh, and essentially, you have to return API so that it keeps snowballing into your final result, OK? But obviously, we want to do something with our key, too. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to keep cheating because I'm under pressure right now. So let's see, API key, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just gonna, yeah, return API, yeah. Let's just copy that line right there, talk about it. Okay, so here we're saying, look, in this new API, we're gonna just assign it a new key, which is what we had before. The only difference is we're gonna take the value of it 
which is action creators key. That's the same thing that was coming in. And we're just going to call that value. We already know that it's some sort of function. And so we're going to go ahead and call that function with dispatch. And then that's, that's the result of that key. So um, I'm, I know I'm missing something here because, right, this is the really tricky part right here. And this is not going to look super great at first. But let's explain what's going on here. OK, I'm missing. What is all actions? We don't need that anymore, right? It's not happy with this at all. What are we? Oh, that that's definitely going to hurt. Yeah. So that was called action creators. Yeah, that, that makes a big difference. <laughs> OK, thanks, buddy. Action creators. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense, but it's still not happy about some things it wanted. Oh, you know what? Um, the computer property name must be of type string, number, symbol, or any. Cannot find name key of parsing error. Clearly, I'm missing something here. OK, so I don't know what's going on. Um, I feel like I'm just piecing. The, oh, I didn't reduce, did I? as key of A. That's what I'm missing as key of A array. Yeah, unfortunately, object keys, right. So it's right here. Sometimes my VS Code instance gets a little tainted and I reload the whole thing just to see if that's not what's the issue. And it appears not to be. Wow. OK, well, I'm going to like really cheat and just copy the whole file. How about that? I don't know what changed here. It's happy with that. Something was wrong with my syntax. Anyway, let's just talk about this. This is the same thing as what we had before. We've got a record coming in. We've got dispatch coming in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just go through all the keys. If I take off as key of A, array. It's not going to want me to reference this key. It says string cannot be used index type, blah, 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 blah. So unfortunately, I don't know why, but TypeScript is not smart enough to know that if you um, if you do object.keys, that you're not going to get a list that is itself a key of A. I think it's probably because of like the, uh, uh, the difference between like object.keys versus like a for loop where you go through all the yeah, I don't know. But for whatever reason, you have to be explicit about what you expect back, which is a key of A array, to make it know that you can actually use this key right here. Um, and if you forget that, or if you don't remember whatever, uh, you can just say, like, as any here. I don't, that wouldn't be ideal to do that. It won't even let you do that. You just have to say key of action creators key of type of action creators, yeah, then it's happy. So that's not very pretty, right? So I thought it was a little bit more pretty if we just say as key of A up there instead, and it's happy with that, I reduce. And now it knows that the API follows this type right here and that the key follows key of A right here without having to explicitly set that as I use it. So it's a little bit cleaner to put it up there, I think. Um, OK, so let's talk about this guy, because this I just learned a few days ago. And I was super happy to see it, because it means that you can say, hey, look, I have an object that I want to return. Um, I'm just going to give the, this arbitrary letter of P. You can use any letter that you want. But I'm going to say, look, I'm looking in the key of A, and I'm going to just grab, like, I'm going to refer to key of A as P from now on. And for each one of those keys, I am going to map the value to the actual return type of the previous value, right? So AP is that, um, oh, that, 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 that's really hard to read, isn't it? What's that? Yeah, AP is the value. So the value previously we said is a function right here, right? So it's just any function. So if I get the return type of that function, 
that's exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm saying, well, I want to get the key and I want to just call it with dispatch and then return the return type of that function. So this is really complex. <laughs> you have to like take a step back and take a, another look at it. But in, in, in essence, what you're doing is you're preserving the types by saying, look, I know I have this function coming in. I don't know what the function is going to be. I have no idea what this function is going to be returning. But from a TypeScript standpoint, you can say, I don't care what it's returning, but give me that return type and make that the value of this new object that I am that I'm returning because I'm just calling that function. I don't even care what the function does. Okay. So I could, I might even be a little bit more explicit by saying, Hey, uh, uh, you know, this function up here shouldn't just be an args with any array. Maybe it should be like a, a, a function that has, that can accept a dispatch and then return anything, something like that. Um, but this is pretty sufficient here because I'm not actually losing any any types at all by doing it this way. So let's take a look. I'm going to save this and run the tests. Uh, bind action creators. It's going to fail because the tests that were previously there obviously are not going to work. So let's look at these tests a little bit. Okay, before we had dispatch right here, we had a test function, dispatch any. Um, it should return an object with the correct properties. Okay, well, we changed this signature a little bit, so let's just go ahead and change it here too, where we're going to say, well, we got an object with test func, and that's all we're passing, really. And then this is going to be test func. This is going to be test func, all of them. Ooh. Does that pass? It does. But we can be a little bit better because we want to uh, cheat again. Because I didn't have a lot of time to prepare today, so I'm going to cheat a lot today. But this is what I've been working on uh, over the last few days. So. Let's see how much more tests we can get out of this. Um, okay. Yeah, so in this case, I just created a couple of interfaces, yep and nope, uh, just simulating like a, a, a Redux action that has a payload, a payload of number or a payload of error, because I just want to make sure to pr like thoroughly test this thing, right? So I've got this patch right here. I've got this yep function that, that does nothing but give you a payload where it adds x and y together. It's of type yep, no big deal, just x plus y. And then I've got a nope that does nothing but gives you a payload with an error. So simulating success, simulating fail. And then, see, we've only got one test here. So basically, I create an API, bind action creators, and I pass it two functions in this object, yep and nope, and I give it dispatch. Now, Theoretically, after I'm done with that, I should be able with TypeScript to say API dot, yep. And I see the original function signature that was provided up here, right? It's got x, y, or x number, y number, and it returns dispatch of, yeah, whatever. Let's see here. So, yep, it says it returns void because dispatch returns void, right? So I already know uh, I've preserved the types of this original function. I didn't lose anything. And even though it's gone through some sort of hacky like stuff here with bind action creators, that type is still available to me. So now I have it right there. Um, and then in the nope case, I would assume, yeah, it knows about both of them. Oops, nope. What was there before? Nope. No dice, right. So, again, it returns void because it's just dispatch. So, both of these functions have been preserved. You can add as many as you want. It's going to do the same thing. Um, so, I'm just testing the calls, matching an in inline snapshot to see that as this was called, I've got a payload of type yep with answer of 13 because I passed 5 and 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. And then I've got another action being called where it's just payload error no dice type nope so this is exactly what I expect um, yeah so I just wanted that to be a little illustration of like how important it is to um, preserve types and how to preserve types when you write any function especially utility functions 
um, because like the developer experience typically is pretty easy. You're not really writing utility functions every day. You're doing your day-to-day -day grind, and you want to have all the context available to you right there in your editor. You don't want to have to like look up bind action creators or some other utility function and figure out what it's doing because you're not really intimately familiar with the guts of that function, right? You just want to know that it's going to work the way you expect. So um, in this case, uh, I could show you an example of that right here, right? So this has gone through a number of things, actually. Um, what was it? Let's see here. Uh, API comes from user's context. OK, so let's go to user's context. It goes through a bunch of stuff. Yeah, so it goes through a lot of hands before it gets here. But because the types are preserved, uh, I can call API fetch users at this point. And I know that did cancel is the first argument. So I can give it did cancel. And the second argument is project ID. So um, and this is really important, too, because it knows that, hey, you can't have undefined here. So um, in this case, I'm going to do something that's kind of a code smell. So in the future, probably be aware of this kind of stuff. but. If you have something that's not supposed to be defined, you can kind of bypass this in TypeScript by adding a bang at the end. And it's going to say, well, I know it's defined. Well, great, good for you. But like maybe you should do something to make sure. Like if project ID, then go ahead and do this call. That would be a much better way to do that type of thing, because then you know for sure that you have a project ID. And you don't want to fetch something when you don't have a project ID, right? So this fetch users call, it requires a project ID. And if you swallow up the types, you might not be aware of that. You might you might think that, oh, it just you have to kind of look it up and then throw it in there. But even if you know which argument it takes, you might still screw up because you don't know that it requires that project ID. So this is why it's important. <laughs> uh, any questions at this point? James? Yeah, sure. It's not pretty, I'll admit to that. Um, when you start getting into some hairy like generics and stuff like that with TypeScript, things can be quite uh, hard to read if you don't know exactly how things are working, um, especially when compared to JavaScript. But the good news is that it's a utility function. This is something that you write once, and you're good to go. Uh, in your day-to-day -day development, you should never see complexity like this, ever. Not in your components, not in your actions. Like This should be a very kind of, all this com complexity should be in utility functions, I would say. But the goal of those utility functions is to write a pure function that preserves types and spits them spits right back out what came in. So let me give you another example of like something very simple, actually, where we would do just that, right? So we have a function, and I'm going to say add bar is the name of this function, and it's going to it's going to return, or I'm sorry, it's going to take in some sort of object of t. Oh, I should probably tell that this is TypeScript. OK, so this is a function called add bar. It accepts an object of t. And this is like as stupid simple as it gets. This should really hit home. I probably should have done this before doing the other example, to be honest. So in this case, we have add bar t. And when I call add bar uh, with some object, like let's say foo 42, I want to see dot bar. I want to see dot bar. I want to know that bar has been added to that object, right? So TypeScript already knows that you have a generic of any type. I don't even care what it is. But you're mapping it to the first argument. So I don't have to tell it that. I don't have to say, oh, this is some type, whatever. All I have to do is call the function with my first argument, and that type becomes t. So in this case, we have an object. Now. <clears throat> You can't just say like object.bar equals high, 
you can't do that because it already knows that the object coming in can be any type, but it doesn't know what type it is. So you can't just like start adding things to it because that doesn't exist on this unknown type of T, right? So this is a case when I would probably use an any because I want to say, look, I don't know what type that is either, but I'm going to say as any and I'm going to add bar because regardless of what type it is, I'm going to add bar. That's my job. I'm adding bar. So you do that and then you can return OBJ, but you still don't have, I mean, you have foo because I just gave you foo, right? I could add X in here with five and I'll also have dot X. But what I really want is dot bar. So how do you do that? Well, in this case, uh, you need to be explicit about the type that you're returning. So I'm going to say, I'm going to return an object as, and I know I talked before about like, don't use as or try not to in a lot of cases, because it can be kind of a cheap shortcut uh, that you don't want to use unless you absolutely need to. I would say in utility functions, it's probably a more common thing to do, but in your day-to-day -day code, definitely don't. Um, but in this case, we know that we have an object and we need to kind of cast it as this new type that we just created. So I'm going to say return object as type of object, which is the same as T, right? And then I'm going to, and I'm going to do an intersection type here. I'm going to add a little bit more flavor to it with bar string. So now it knows I don't, it knows I don't know or care what type's coming in, but I'm adding bar and I'm going to add that to the type information as well. So now I do dot bar and there it is, right? So that's the basic core way that you preserve types when writing a function is by doing stuff like that. Just being aware of what's coming in and ensuring that you're either adding to or you could even take away. Actually, you could do something like as exclude t foo, something like that. And I could say, oh, well, uh, I don't know what type's coming in, but I'm just going to go ahead and delete uh, object as any foo. So you don't have foo anymore. And now it's not, what is that? <laughs> shut up. Shut up. You shut up. <laughs> yeah, why is that not working? Well, that might be a bug. I don't know. But we could also do... Yeah, I thought exclude worked exactly that way. Extends you never t. Exclude from t those types that are assignable to you. Well, I've clearly done that wrong. What's that? It extends not removes. It just extends everything from you, but except for everything other than you. So you're actually not removing it. Um, I'm. What's that? Well, let's look it up. Let's look it up. Let's see, because TypeScript app is really good documentation. So I'm going to look up the exclude type. <laughs> exclude to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exclude well that's not what I'm used to seeing let's see here extract is it extract no return type instance type well ABCD ACF you're left with BD huh so I'm guessing exclude can't be used on an object like I just saw there Oh, are you saying like this, like t dot foo, like that? No, oh. Um. Oh. Well, it kind of does though, because like when you do pick, like pick t, you can pick foo like that. Does not satisfy key of T. Yeah, but in this case, it doesn't know what type T is, so you have to be like 
as uh, t and foo string, something like that. And then you could whoop, maybe just. Well, I wasn't picking. <laughs> Say it again, James. Wrap. What do you mean, wrap foo? Where? Which line? Yeah. Does that work? No. Nope. Well, it might be a bug. It might be because I know that pick works that way. Like if you have, um, for example, um, a type here where. You Mm, it could be. I mean, we could try this in a playground. Lose all the color syntax highlighting, but yeah, we could we could see if that's a, a thing. Maybe it's in like a newer version of TypeScript. So let's go into like the newest three seven two. Let's go into nightly build. I think it's because it doesn't know what type T is. That's what I think. So if it was like more explicit and like this type T coming in was something that had foo in it, yeah, you could exclude T from or from that. But let's see, add bar foo forty two dot foo. Yeah, see, so if I had like a more explicit type like this, where it's like uh, something with foo and a string, and then I could say exclude type of object foo. Then I could say, uh, well, this is supposed to be a string, so I'll do a string. It's still, yeah, I don't know what the deal, it might be a bug. There's definitely some bugs in TypeScript. Um, in fact, Anders Helsberg just fixed one of mine like today, and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> because it used to be that like if you had a, a function call like this, and you had like destructuring, like, like uh, x, y equals like that, like in some cases, x and y would like completely swallow their types. You wouldn't have them. And so I wrote up a really good issue on that with like a lot of information. And um, finally, Anders Salzberg submitted some sort of fix today. So, so it works if you do it like this. We. Oh, you got it? Yeah. It's just you were doing foo string when foo, what we're passing in as a number. So I could do foo number here. Oh, I did foo string. Is that what's up? Yeah, because I was using a number. Okay, let's try that. So you're saying foo number here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that, okay, dot, sweet. Yeah, so theoretically, if I had bar in here, nice, good job, James. And I said dot, but now I don't have bar, right? See, that's the issue. You should have bar still. You just excluded foo. Wow, this is a discovery moment for everyone. Um, yeah, see, that's... Yeah. Yeah, but again, if you have an explicit type, I think, uh, where it's like, you know... Yeah, no kidding, right? I'll submit this issue now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this was a test for you guys. So uh, I really this was my plan all along. Yeah, but like if you have a, a something like like foo number bar number like that, right? And then you could say you know type of object, and I'm just gonna pick foo. That's all I want to return. And then here you say foo forty two bar. 55, and then you say dot foo. See, that works. That's a pick uh, mechanism. And you can, you can add as many keys as you want here. Like, you can say or bar, and it will let you get both of them. But uh, you can't add, like, keys that don't exist like that. So that won't work. It'll be like, yay, yeah, that, doesn't, that doesn't satisfy the constraint, right? So that's what I was trying to do, but with the inverse, right? With exclude, you should be able to do the same thing, but I think we just discovered you can't, or there is a bug. It could have been reintroduced. Sometimes they have regressions, so, you know, could be a regression issue. But whatever. I mean, you should know that these types of things exist. If you look into the advanced um, uh, 
this guy, the uh, advanced type section of the TypeScript uh, handbook. You're going to see a lot of these types of things, like intersection types. I showed you guys the intersection type with uh, first and second, like that, where you can take type T and just add anything, stack anything on top of it that you want. Um, let's see, type guards, union types. Union types are just the piped ones, like A or B. Nullable types, type aliases, yeah, nullable. Yeah, I like that too, actually. Nullable is a really fun type because you can say non-nullable T. And now you've got, uh, like say T was a string, right? Like T extends string or number. You can do that. And then this will be value. Oops. Right, so get rid of that. So I could pass 42 in here, and you know it knows that I'm dealing with a number here. So if I had like a const, um, uh, let's say x, and the type of that, um, well actually let's say data equals, well the type is going to be something with x in it, and that's optional, and it's a number, and then there's like y, and that's an optional number as well, right? Um, in fact, this is a very typical point kind of data type. So I'll give it x5, y7. So from a TypeScript standpoint, if you, um, if you add this point dot x, it knows that it's an optional. It, even though you've just defined it right here, the type of it is still this optional type. So it can't, unless you took this whole thing away, like that, and then did dot x, then it would know that that x actually existed, right? But because you told it the type was this xy thing, which is really just a fancy way of saying, you know, interface point, point, right? It doesn't know if that X actually exists or not. So that gets into that bang territory where you have to say like, well, I know it exists, but you don't in this case because you have a function that returns a non-nullable T. So you know after this function is done with your value that you actually have a value. So if I just returned the value as is, um, and then like tried to add like something to it maybe, It's okay with that. Why? Stringer number. Oh, because, well, it's a stringer number. You can always add something to it. Yeah, so that's not a great example. But the point is, like, you can actually be very explicit about things like that. And you can even uh, be explicit about immutability. Like, you can say um, read only uh, type of T. Oh, just T. Sorry. Read only T. And so if this was the, the data coming in, right, like if I just passed in the point like this and I don't even care what type it is, and I said, look, I'm going to pass in some sort of object, but when it comes back out, it's read-only, so I'm going to try and take X and assign 5 to it. Yeah, it's not going to like that because this is read-only. So this is great for, like, immutability, um, which Redux cares about, right, um, state management like that. So you want to be... How do I say this? You you can write runtime type checking. David, you talked about that before. Where like you have like these uh, you know if this throw this error if that throw that error. That is useful for some libraries. Uh, but when you're dealing with TypeScript and you know that your consumer is also TypeScript, especially in a case when you're working in a professional environment and all of your source code is like maintained by you guys, right? And so you know that you're in that kind of pure TypeScript ecosystem it makes little to no sense to actually do that. Like you wouldn't want to throw errors all over the place because that's additional code that you have to download, that the user has to download in the client, right? So you don't want to incur that, that hit. So how do you give them that type safety without throwing errors? Well, this is how you do it. You say, well, you can't edit that or you know, you, this is the type I expect coming in. TypeScript has a whole bunch of mechanisms to basically define exactly what the types it expects are at any point in time. And one of those things is read-only, which is good for like an object freeze situation, right? Like you could have 
uh, const data equals object dot freeze foo forty two and now data dot foo equals you know fifty seven it's not going to like that because the type is a read only type it already it already knew that by using object dot freeze so yeah, just different ways to kind of catch these things at compile time instead of runtime will save you a lot of time. Um, so you don't have to fight these problems in production. You can fight them on your development server. Um, how are we doing on time? Was this it? Oh, this was 3.30, so we have 15 more minutes. <clears throat> I don't have a lot else today. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare, but um, anything else we want to learn about today? Or anything else you want to see me fail at today? <laughs> so, the line two? Yeah. Value as yeah. Um, I might have missed the first one. The second, so I'm just asking. Oh. Can you actually put this as read only key in uh, the Jeffy kit set? Like in the function? Like here? Yeah. yeah. Like here? No, you couldn't do that. Because that's the return. No, so this is the, uh, okay. Oh, what's the question? Can I not zoom in? I'm going to zoom in. Get rid of this. Some more real estate. Okay, so what Ravanth is asking is, like, can you not also just say as read only T here? And you can't. And the reason why is like you have to realize this is a this is a generic. And so the way the generics work is you're saying, I have a type coming in. <coughs> um, so conditional types are are a thing that I think you're trying to do there, Ravanth. And the way that you would do that is you could say T extends uh, map. And you can say any, any, right? Oh, now I really need to zoom back out. Um, OK. So you could say t extends map any, any value t. Um, you could even say map t to make it a little bit more. Or you could even say, let's just rename this to m instead of t. It doesn't matter what it is, right? But in this case, it's a map. You know that it's a map. And so in your return type, what you can do is you can say, um, you wouldn't put it in the, in the angle brackets there, but you would put it here in your return type, right? So you can say, okay, well, if M extends map, and I don't know what those types are because it's any, any, but you can do something fancy like this where you say infer K, infer, mm, thank you for auto-completing that, infer V, uh, then I want to return a map. This is going to go really too fast. I know I'll slow down and recap here, but so let me save that and have it. It's not going to auto format, is it? Yeah, because I'm not. OK, let's just do this. Right. So in this case, you're saying, look, I have a type coming in that is of type map any any. I don't care what kind of map it is that's coming in, but that's what it needs to be, some sort of map. And you say, but the, the type that I'm going to return coming back out I want it to be very, you know, based on the, the first type. So I'm going to say, okay, well, if m extends map, uh, I don't know what the key is, but just go ahead and infer it for me and give me that letter k because I want to use that letter k later. Mm -hmm. And then again, I don't know what v is either, but give me the letter v because I want to use that later. And it's going to say, well, if it if it extends that, then go ahead and return this map of kv. Otherwise, return never. Now, what this is saying is like. This never scenario, this is a ternary expression, but we know that it's never going to get here because we know that it's going to extend map. That's what we've already told it right here in the generic uh, expression here. It has to be a map. So if it extends map, which it will, go ahead and return a map with that very type inferred back. And so you can just return the map straight up. It doesn't like that because it's not assignable to type m extends blah, blah, blah. Oh, right. This is another one of those things where uh, TypeScript can be a little bit annoying because you have to, and I actually did this in the first session that we did, the, the generics presentation. You have to actually redefine this as map. Um, and yeah, this whole thing actually. 
M extends map and for KV, blah, blah, never. It doesn't like that either, does it? Conversion of type M. Let's see here. Nope. Well, I don't know then. Great. Everything doesn't work today. But yeah, I mean, you could do as any as well, but you've already defined this is what it's returning here, so you know that if I give you a map, like, uh, we're still calling this add bar, let's just call it foo. So, um, foo, some map, I didn't like that either. Yeah, that works. Okay, so who am? Yeah, dot get. Yeah, it's not going to know anything more than that, but um, there's nothing special here. So maps could be. Um, you could define your map here, right? You could say, well, instead of a string being the key, I want it to be a number, right? And then uh, let's make the string the value. Can't you do that? Kv. Oh, right, so the, this has to be a number now, so 42, and the value has to be string. So there we go. We've got our map. So I'm passing in a map, and I'm going to do .get, and it's going to say key is number, right? So I've defined that. Um, and even though it's gone through my foo function, I know that when it comes back, um, I, want, I want to preserve that type of knowing that the key is a number. So I think if TypeScript is smart enough, you might not even have to do this. And it is, it's smart enough. But in some cases, you might have to actually do this conditional type because you might want to take K and B and do some sort of union type on it. You might want to do like some sort of add bar situation, adding another property to something, you know, not in a map situation, but something, right? Some sort of object coming in, you conditionally want to do something with it. So. What if you look at the exact same example that we had before? The add bar? Uh, Um, oh, right, yeah, you can do as, yeah, you can do that. Right, it should know that information. So I wanted to, ex yeah. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. You have to return value, yeah. And now, all foo with an object, and you have to assign something to it, something inside it. Yeah, you, yeah, for sure. But so the conditional types are a little bit interesting too, because you can say what I had before. You can say um, if t extends some sort of like object with foo in it and a number, then I want to return a number. Otherwise, I want to return a string. Right. So you could say, you know, I'm I'm not going to actually do that in the guts of this function. But if you do that, then if you call foo with some sort of uh, object that has foo and a number, so 42. I can't do dot foo anymore because the result of this is a number. So I'll just prove that by, you know, hovering over foo. It says, well, it's going to return a number. Well, hold on. Let's just do this. Const x equals foo, foo 42. x is a number. But if I do const y equals foo bar 42, it should give me a string. Y is now a string. So that's how conditional types work. Yeah. Did you get that one, James? Yes. You got to pay attention, James. <laughs> okay, so this is a good one. This is a good nugget. And it worked. This one worked. <laughs> oh, are you still? 
Okay, so I was just explaining. Let me recap this real quick. So we've got a, an object of T coming in, and then we're going to do a conditional type based off of that generic type, right? And we're going to say this function returns something. But if T extends foo number, some sort of object with foo and a number, then I'm going to return an actual number. And in all other cases, I'm going to return a string. So in this case, I have const x equals foo, foo42. That matches that conditional type expression. And so x is a number. But in the second case, where I, I send bar of 42, y is a string. So that's how a conditional type works. That's like, um, I've definitely seen some kinks with conditional types. Like I said before, you might have to actually say, you know, at some point, you might have to say um, value as this. or as any as this to really, but that that really is the same thing as um, just not doing that at all and just saying as any and letting the return expression define that type. Um, I tend to veer against doing this type of thing because you want to have TypeScript functions infer types for you. You don't want to explicitly say what they are, but in this case, you're doing something crazy with a conditional type. You got to be pretty explicit about it. But yeah, this is. Uh, a super great feature here. I've, I've used it a couple times. It's not a very common thing, but but there are times when you do need to really reflect on those types coming in and do something different. Right. So. Yeah, that's, that's common for a function, yeah. but it's uh, a little bit different for a type, right? Like, I think it's more rare to do that with a type, though, because um, you still have the right to type the subscript functions, right? Like if, let's say, uh, x yeah. is greater than 100, that's when you return. Uh, right, like you could say if type of value, or let's say if uh, value dot foo, yeah. uh, but it's you don't really know the type of value yet. But yeah, you could have. Um, you definitely have this string situation where you say t extends string or number, and then value is t. Uh, we already had that, and then uh, just get rid of this entirely, right? So let's say we have this situation, right, where we say, oh, type of uh, value equals string. Then I'm going to like return a number. And in all other cases, I'm going to return a string. So in this case, uh, you call foo with a number. And right, so it doesn't know. If you hover over this function foo, it's going to say, well, it returns 42 or nope, but we don't know anything more than that. So this is a good example of where you can be more explicit and say, well, I know what I'm returning here, because if t extends string, as is indicated by type of value equals string, I'm going to return a number. In all other cases, I'm returning a string, not nope. You could give it a literal of nope if you wanted to, but in this case, I'm just going to say some string. It's not going to be happy with that, right? That's what I was saying before is a little sticky part of TypeScript. You have to actually say as that as that. It's so dumb that you have to do that. And I've opened up an issue about that too. But it does work. So can you even get rid of this now? Yeah. Yeah, you can. So now if you hover over foo, you've got t extends string, number, otherwise string. Okay, so now let's try it out. Let's do foo 42 dot, yep, char at we got. So we know this is a string. Um, let's just make it a little bit more obvious and say x equals foo. And then in the y case, equals foo bar y is now a number, right? Yeah. So I, I actually, I swear to God, I tried this yeah. a couple months ago, and this did not work. So I feel like they fixed it yeah. uh, because a simple string or number primitive case, uh, yeah, actually, I think I did open up an issue. I think they did fix it. But yeah, this is one of those things where I could see you actually doing something like this. Yeah. Yeah. And Yeah, I could just say like return type no, no, type I of mean, like, 
No, it doesn't work that way. Sorry. I'm sorry. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, so you do this. Yeah, it's not going to work, um, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not going to work. Let's see. It just says stringer number. So it's a stringer number union type in this case. It doesn't know enough. It doesn't know that that relates to the type coming in. So you have to be explicit about that. And it does make sense that you have to be explicit about that. But you might be able to reduce this to something like return type of value equals string. Then uh, 42. Otherwise, nope. And then you could do that as this guy. And then you don't repeat yourself, right? So. Yeah, so yeah, like that. So type of value string, and then if you hover over foo, you should see t extends string number, otherwise string. And then if you go down here, you're seeing string, and you head on here, you have number. Yeah, so that's a, a good example of how that works too. So well, I'm glad we're ending on a good note because uh, it started off a little bit rough, but yeah, this is good useful information here and fortunately we have it recorded so um, hopefully with audio this time <laughs> anything else uh, we're actually out of time but anything else real quick before anyone tries to steal the room okay cool I'll put up this video after and I'll stop the recording right now whoa